Morning, KubeCon. I am excited to talk to you today about how we can build more sustainable software and how we can scale our workloads while reducing our carbon emissions. In today's world, it is paramount to be energy conscious. We've seen countries, businesses, institutions, and individuals stepping up and creating their own sustainability goals, becoming more energy efficient, creating KPIs, and also, we want to make sure that software, which is a big part of our lives, takes a center stage in this conversation, which it hasn't so far, even though software runs the world, and it does take a lot of electricity to run. So let's change that, and let's start by talking about the green software principles, as defined by the Green Software Foundation. Number one, energy efficiency. Simply put, use the least amount of energy possible. For us, that's all about making sure our code is efficient. Number two, hardware efficiency. Everything that we do or use today needs carbon to be produced and disposed of. Using less devices and less components in our solutions will ensure that that embodied carbon is less. And three, carbon awareness, which is all about the distinction between clean energy and dirty energy. And it's all about knowing, based on that, when to do more or when to do less. The first two are probably fairly well understood and quite direct. So let's deep dive into the third one a little bit more. And before we go too far, let me explain that when I say clean energy, I'm talking about what we regularly describe as renewable energies. And when I say dirty energy, is what we commonly call fossil fuels. Now that we know the types of energy that are out there, let's look at the concept of carbon intensity. Carbon intensity is the measure of the amount of carbon produced in order for the energy that we use to be created. So it's actually represented by the interesting unit at the top of the bars that stands for grams of carbon per kilowatt hour. And you'll notice that it varies quite a bit because of the variability of renewable energies. For example, if it's cloudy today, or the sun's not blowing, or the wind is not blowing, so definitely not the Netherlands, it can actually imply that we need more sources of dirty energy introduced into the mix to compensate for that. And so it will increase our carbon intensity. Okay, so we know what carbon intensity is. What does that mean? for Kubernetes and our cloud-native workloads. Well, that is where the Kubernetes event-driven autoscaler comes in. Kada is a sandbox, is a, uh, essentially a incubating project in the CNCF, and we have been creating a carbon-aware scaler for Kada. The carbon-aware scaler main idea and principle is that we are gonna be able to use a concept called demand shaping. And demand shaping is nothing but the idea of scaling your workloads based on the carbon intensity of the infrastructure where they're running. For example, the region of a cloud provider. Today, this is implemented by using a Kubernetes operator that you see on your right with a big green square, and that is going to read that cloud providers or that infrastructure provider's data from a config map and use that config maps data which is gonna be point in time as well as historical data to decide what the amount of replicas on the Kata scaled object is going to be and we'll edit that for you. We also know that not all providers might actually have that data available today and so we also created another operator that builds on top of the Green Software Foundation's Carbon Aware SDK which is an open source wrapper for public sources of data so that that config map will be created and available for everyone to use and kick the tires on this new carbon aware scaler. What does that look like? Well, for all of you that are using Kata, it's gonna be very familiar. And for all of you that are not, I definitely recommend you take a look at the project. So you're gonna be able to define what the carbon emission thresholds are and then what the maximum replicas respectively for each one is going to be. We have a lot of features there that we don't have time to talk about today but we are currently working on bringing this project into Kata Core. We welcome everyone to join us in doing so. We're literally doing that as we speak and continue to develop the carbon aware scaling algorithm for the future and to make sure that your use cases are baked in. And by the way, 
If you don't know where to start, there's always a friendly AI that can help you get started and can do things like, for example, creating your first carbon aware scaler. All right. Really, though, if you want to join the sustainability efforts, if you're interested in sustainability, please join us at the CNCF sustainability tag. And if you're interested in Kubernetes, these uh, operators and how to start with sustainability in Kubernetes, check the links at the top of this slide and this QR code. I hope you're as stoked as me to have a tremendous impact in how software and IT can shape our sustainability goals. And I look forward to talking to all of you through KubeCon and at our booth. Have a wonderful KubeCon. Thank you.